This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com, use the code SHOW20 for 20% off and free shipping. Now, after using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever. Introducing the season's champ, the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little bit off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Not to worry, this bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, even in the ocean. Personally, I love this thing because it comes with a compact case. I take it wherever I go, and spring cleaning doesn't just have to apply to your nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit and Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOW20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOW20 at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Hello everyone and welcome to the FM show. I am your host Tony Jameson and joining me as always is my sweeper keeper on attack, the one and only Aaron Falloon aka RDF Tactics. Aaron, how are you my man? I am very good. I am very good. Finally got a save going on the good old football manager 2024. So no longer just trying out tactics because I finally settled on one. I finally mm. fallen in love. Yeah, finally fallen in love with a tactic. It's a four three, no, a four two one three. I, I don't even know the numbers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the numbers I anymore. Fall in love with something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just fall in love with it something. It just looks so married. beautiful as well. It looks so beautiful, and I've tried it at like just different teams. Because at first I tried it at Young Boys in Switzerland, and as mm. I was looking at it, I was like, this is perfect for Manchester United. Did it at Manchester United, the tweet blew up. So I was like, I've got to make a video. So I done the video. But then today, this morning, I was like, I want to try this in the save. So I went over to Norway, where Tromso, mm -hmm. we managed to complete a season in the whole day. But we'll do that uh, save update a little later. But yeah, I'm very pumped up. I'm pumped up. Good. Pumped. I'm glad. I'm glad you're bringing <laughs> the energy because someone's got to do it and it ain't going to be me. Should say as well, though, before we get started on today's episode, probably address uh, the fact that producer Steve hasn't been around for the past few weeks. And basically, Steve has been doing a lot of work for TIFO as part of their football tennis podcast. And with the Euros coming up, rather than stretching himself a little bit too thin, he has uh, made the difficult decision to step down from the FM show. Now, obviously, Aaron and myself, we want to say a massive thank you to Steve for all the hard work he's done for us, both here on the FM show and when we were part of The Athletic. He taught us about these things called scripts <laughs> and being on time and <laughs> booking things in advance. And like, but in all seriousness, though, like, he was great to work with. And of course, he'll be, he will be missed, won't he, Aaron? Oh, absolutely. We're still using this his old script as a template for. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> but <laughs> he would definitely be missed, man. Um, so obviously, I wouldn't be podcasting if it wasn't for him being on the athlete before it was, it was him and Ian McIntosh. And then I was being invited as guest a, a couple of times. Then they invited me to be a host, but that was obviously through the recommendation from Steve as well. So I appreciate that. And I've learned a lot of things because I remember having guests on the show, then speaking on the speaking over the guest on the show. So it was like, yeah, I wasn't the best host, but obviously it was the first time podcasting. And he made, he made me comfortable with it, to be honest, because it can be daunting. 
it could have been daunting, I should say, but I found it a pretty, pretty exciting, pretty comfortable. Uh, comfortable. I did get the nerves, but you're supposed to get that nerves before you're recording, right? Yeah, That's 100%. supposed to happen, yeah. Hundred percent, and like, and for me as well. Like, even when we did it with the athletic, when we were recording audio wise, like I'm yeah. very used to just doing stuff in one take, which obviously was why we do video now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Breaking it down to go like, no, 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 like redo it, get the intonation right, like, and it's like that was cool, like to learn all that sort of presenting skills yeah. rather than just the hosting that I normally do. It was more, it was being more of a presenter than than a host. So, so that yeah, was great, yeah. and and also as well, not just the actual technical stuff, but hanging out in real life and doing the live shows like that was so much fun ah oh, that was i think that's that's definitely been the best part and that was my best episode definitely 100 percent the live one and obviously mm. the insomnia gaming as well which was a bit that was that was a challenge that was fun but it was a challenge not because of anything in our control <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting trying to talk about deep line playmakers and rest defense when you've got a zombie apocalypse happening next door <laughs> It's, it's it's tricky we tried it we did a good job quite literally we got over it uh, and then yeah then the Nottingham Comedy Festival show as well fantastic to be surrounded by like our audience our viewers our listeners yeah. people from the FM community and just to be there and hang out as mates have a drink it was it was great it was really great and obviously you know I'm sure Steve will be back at some point as a guest to come and chat to us and let us know whether he ever did uh install I'm fm24 to, or not i'm trying to, I'm trying to think uh, this is going to come across pretty sad mm -hmm. I've, other than my birthday it's literally the last time i've been out like as a group of friends like it's the last time i've been out where we had obviously the meal and we had a few drinks done the show but the show didn't feel like work by then obviously yeah i mean there was a few carrying bags up the stairs and plugging things in and, and that's when the realization hit is like oh wait they're here for us now people are here for us. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, yeah, that's when yeah. it, literally we was on the stage i think i've knocked over a drink or something i think that's when the realization hit oh no steve warned me about knocking over a drink and i think that's when the hit me i was like oh wait Damn, we're all, this is going to be a bit. We're actually here for a show. Damn. Yeah, he's basically, basically having a conversation with someone going, This is great, but I've got to go and do a show. That's, that's me. I'm meant to be on the stage now. This is called yeah, my name. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, bless. But yeah, like I say, Steve, I'm sure we'll be back at some point. Um, and of course, feel free to reach out to Steve and, and say, you know, say thank you and stuff. But if we come back around to what obviously every show starts with, Aaron, you've touched upon it already. Yeah. You're, now, you're now hanging out over in Scandinavia, pal. How's that treating you? Yeah, we're in um we're in Norway with Tromsø. Uh I started this the season today and ended the season today. It was like a, it started out on Twitter, it ended on Twitter. <laughs> so I've been doing these things where like I'm just playing the game and sometimes I just think, oh, this is a big game. I might as well record it and then I can just put it on Twitter. But it also allows other people to see what other people do during these games and what changes they make and if they get a player sent off because so for some odd reason whenever we got a big game and i pull it on twitter somebody has to get sent off and it just makes because i want to show off this tactic right but then mm -hmm. you can't show off a tactic with 10 men you're like now you're defending especially against like real madrid and bodo glim it's like why in these games you, you decide to get the red card well, um, i remember a couple of weeks ago we were saying on the episode going what do you do when you go down to 10 men or like, yeah what exactly you yeah do when you go down to 10 men? exactly so, yeah and this is why you should know the tactic obviously i created the tactic about four days ago so in these moments i'm still not quite like know what to do in those sort of moments and it's just like it was just a hell of defending a hell of defending but yeah the season ended uh we finished second we finished second behind boulder which is actually very decent i think they're predicted to finish fifth uh, mm -hmm. Trump but we finished second behind Bodo Glim, who they are fierce rivals. The fierce are fierce mm -hmm. rivals, fiercest rivals. Came to our stadium, second last game of the season, got a free free draw, and I thought, oh, that's a decent draw. Until yeah. I read at the bottom, and Bodo Glim are now the champions. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> oh no! But it's payback. It's payback for showing off because right early in the day, in the morning. I recorded myself going away to Bodo and getting the win. And I was just gloating about it on Twitter. And then at the end of the season, they come to us and win the league in our stadium. So that was like, ah, but we've got to pick ourselves back up because in the next two games, we've got a cup final, which was against a team. I think, I believe they're in the relegation playoffs. So mm -hmm. when winning that 4 1, one of our strikers scored four goals. He scored a perfect hat trick. And then as mm -hmm. you do, you're just about to take him off. I make the sub. 
And then I go back into the game, and then the highlights is in the highlight for some reason. And then he yeah. scores again, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you might as well just stay on that. You might as well just stay on and have fun. Have, <laughs> have fun. So that's what's happened today. But lastly, the most interesting thing of the day. Mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, a few episodes ago, I talk about I would never sub my centre back. I would never sub my centre back. Today, I subbed both of my centre backs, and one of them was in the first minute. You did. You tweeted me straight away about that. Going, you're not going to believe what I've just done. I was like, what the hell's oh going my on? God. So, so basically, what happens? Um, I saved my team selection, so I've got like my preferred eleven. So I did that. I set that, but I was just pressing continue spacebar. I didn't realize my centre back was injured, so it sort of like replaced him with mm. someone else. But it wasn't with who I would would, would replace him with. And it was a guy with like his attribute wise is not these, it's not bad, but he's got like it's just 11s, 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 12s. Whereas mm. the guy that I wanted got a few sevens and tens, but then he's got the 16s and jump and reach and the 16th and strength. So I was like, yeah, this is the this is definitely the backup. So I I, I went into the game and it was against Bodo Glim at their stadium, and I was talking about being brave with the youth players as well because we're using we're using youth. And it was like the first, as soon as the game kicked off, I was like, wrong centre back. This is a big game. <laughs> so I was like, yep, yeah, swap, boy, swap, swap. And then at half time, the experienced one was feeling anxious or complacent. Mm-hmm. Well, we was 2 1 up. So I was like, yeah, you're off as well, lad. So the centre backs were like, one was 17 and one was 19. And then this is like, I could just see the momentum just go to Bodo. It was just, <laughs> it was honestly, if you watched it, if you watched the thing, it was horrible. It was a penalty. They missed the penalty. Oh, My no. goalkeeper made like three fantastic saves. Goal disallowed. It was just like, it was mental. Even in the 90th minute, honestly, Tony, it was like six yeah. minutes. They had about four highlights in the 90th minute. <laughs> it, was just, it was horrible. It was horrible, man. Oh. We got the win, but it was horrible. And then, like I said, at the end of the season, they got their revenge by beating me and winning the league title, or drawing against me by get, uh, winning the league title. Oh, man. That match yeah. was just... <laughs> it's one of those matches that I complain about when I'm the other side. When I'm bolder, I'm the one to go, man, how have you messed that? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just there thinking, no, this is another highlight. It's another highlight. <laughs> oh, my God. But, but, glad you're in Norway, though. Norway is fun. There's it's a lot fun. of fun to manage It's if fun. People, it's... Like, if people listening haven't done it, I would heartily recommend it. Um, it as you said, there, like, you me get as well. the season's done pretty quickly. Yeah, you? that's what I was about to say that. Last year, it suits me because it's about 30 games, I think. And yeah. it, just, it goes very quickly. And then we're going to have a long pre-season. And then we're going to have our youth intake as well, which happens in December. So, one thing touching upon that, one thing I would say though, if you are managing in Norway, is be aware that your season starts at a different time to the rest of yeah. Europe. So, <laughs> any mid mid season momentum you've got is going to be shot to pieces when the yeah. summer transfer window opens up in Europe and all of your yeah, I'll just play my game. Like going for like two million quid or six yeah. million is the most you're ever going to see from someone. It's like, it's crazy. Playing champagne football with this defensive midfielder, clearly the best player on the team. Like he's just, mm-hmm. he's the one. And I saw Lil coming in, but the thing is I rejected the first offer because I wanted 50% of next sale. I'm adamant on that. I don't, I do not care. And then it was like, his max value was 1.4 million and I asked for 1.3. They said, nah. So I was like, fine. I thought he was going to kick off, but he didn't. So I was like, oh, these players seem to like it here then. But then like six days later, they came in with that 50% and 1.3. I was like, lad, our finances in red. You've mm. done the job, man. Thank you, man. We're, we're at that point, joining top of the table. We're playing champagne football. I think the youth, the youth have got it from here. He left, draw, draw, lost. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, tell you what, lad. Come back in three seasons, and then French lots don't appreciate you. Do, I do didn't that. try. What I should have tried is the loan back. I should have tried that. Now yeah, I'm that does work. That now. Pretty handy there. Yeah. I've only thought about that now, to be honest. I didn't <laughs> just now, but it was just draw, draw, loss. It was just funny. Yeah, um, I think I think that's the thing. I think it's it's when you you sell a player that you know has to go. Yeah, you do think. He might come back in a couple of years, but he's not been played. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, might, yeah. They might not actually play him. So it's that thing uh, in it you talked about earlier back. in your stream, sorry, yesterday, and you talked about uh about plug and play tactics and mm-hmm. like how you have a tactic. It might not be working for you, but it could be working for someone else because they've just got that one player that connects it. And he was that guy that he was that one player that connected it. And then now it's just like we don't look like the same team. We're not fizzing it about. Oh, mate, it's, it's strange, just, isn't it? One piece of the puzzle just changes yeah. the whole thing, like, completely. I mean, 
we've we've I've, how long are we in now 12 minutes into the show I, I feel like i can get it off my chest now aaron right strap yourselves in everybody we're gonna go <laughs> you know, aaron's been talking about how everything's been lovely and normal yeah, and painting this beautiful picture of champagne football you know high taxation and public services right now here i am i'm going to talk to you about building a nation in greece and how to uh, raise your heart rate to a condition Ooh. that might make you feel a little bit unwell <laughs> and what we did what we did right we talked in the last in the last episode didn't we about how i went through a bad run of form then i did tj tactics which <laughs> you watched and you were like you know what you've made the right calls in these in these, yeah, yeah. these things and we looked great for half a dozen games got ourselves towards the that split of the the league which is the the championship group which means we only play the top six sides yeah and um at that point we got ourselves into the position where we got into the six because we were seventh at that point. And I was like, it looks like we might miss out here. <laughs> um, but we'd beaten AEK. We got to the Greek Cup final. We'd beaten um, Braga to get into the Euro Conference League Conference. semi-final against Pauk Salonika. Yes, so another yeah, Greek yeah, side. Yeah. So we're building that nation. There's two teams in Europe. We won the first leg. In the Conference League semi-final, we won 2-1. Hard-earned victory. Very hard-earned victory. <laughs> Professional performance. We got a penalty in the 87th minute or something Ooh. to make it like 2-1. I was like, hey, you know what? We've done a good job here because we've come from behind um, okay. to get this win. Like, the league form, I must say, <laughs> since, the, since that cough was abysmal. Like, it was abysmal. It was basically like we'd... we'd we built ourselves up to get into that group and then we all went, job done, everyone. Yeah, yeah. It felt like that. I got this message halfway through the season where it's like, yeah, the board are happy. We've uh, reached the target of finishing another top path. And it just felt like the players was like, right, yeah, cheers. Because it's like weird as well because you mentioned the cup run. We had that back-to-back film where we played one team in the league and one team in the cup. Losing against oh. them in the league, smote them in the cup. It's like, Lads, it's, lads, what's going on? It's the same team. Three, three games in a row against AEK. Like, you know, smashed, <laughs> you know, happened in the league, then we beat them in the, in obviously beat them well in the in the cup. So we've got Pau Salonica in the Euro Conference League semifinals. We've got Panathinaikos in the Greek Cup final. Okay. So Ooh. that's pretty good. Panathinaikos are on a charge in the Euro Cup. No. Yeah, they're in the Euro Cup yeah, as well. Euro. Um, so they, yeah, because it's us, Pauk, and Panathinaikos, and um, Austria Vienna, no, Rapid Vienna, sorry, in the in the final four. So there's three Ooh. big teams, right? And and Vienna. So we're like, right, you know, something's going to happen here. Um, oh, no, sorry, no, no, no. Betis and Stuttgart. It was Panathinaikos were in the Euros, Euro against that. And thinking right okay we just got to get through this game against Pau. so we got to do get through the game right the league <laughs> form's been atrocious we've lost most of the games like it's we've switched off um and we get to three games to go right it comes down the league form is that bad we have one game to finish fifth and as you know if we finish fifth you finish in the euros if you finish sixth you get nothing <laughs> final game of the season is against the team who have who were in fifth at the time past janinia Okay, yeah, 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 we're yeah. level on points. We're ahead on goal difference, but it's head to heads. And because we lost to them at the start of that split, we're sat behind them. Okay. So the final three games look like this Euro Conference semi final second leg against Pau Salonica. 2 1 0. We get a goalkeeper injury before a ball's <laughs> been kicked. Thinking, right, our first choice goalkeeper is out for eight weeks. Mm. So his season's done. We're thinking, right, that's fine. We'll play our backup goalkeeper. This is going to be fine. This is why we have a backup goalkeeper for these very, very situations. He is out for three weeks. <laughs> we go into the Euro second leg, the Conference League second leg, with a goalkeeper who's 18 years old from our development centre because you can't register anybody else in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd sold our Greek backup goalkeeper in January because Panathinaikos wanted him. And I didn't want to sell him, but it was like, oh, I want to go and play football. And I'm like, well, you've sat on the bench for two years. Fine. Okay. We would have had him. It would have been a different story. The 18-year-old comes in. He tries his best. Story was there <laughs> for him to be the, the hero. 
But when he's put the ball out of his net three times, we've lost 3-0. Oh. We're not making our way to the Euro Conference League final. Okay, so fine. Conference League doesn't happen. Pick yourselves up, lads. Go again. Final league game of the season. Pass Janina. We have to win. We have <laughs> to win. 18-year-old goalkeeper. We've trusted you in Europe. Into the league. Oh, sorry. No, hang on. Just you can't you can't play in the league because the league registration rules closed a while ago. So what you have to do now is you have to sit this game out. Oh, I know, man. Put a graded out goalkeeper with handling of seven. I was there. Match. I yeah. was there. So he goes in, not just him, but his grayed out goalkeeper mate who sits on the bench as the backup because we need a backup goalkeeper <laughs> on for when he inevitably makes a mistake. <laughs> So we go in there, we draw one all, right? We throw everything at pass. We go goal down as well. I'm like, oh no, not this way. We go goal down, then we, we pull it back to, to one all. We throw everything. I think at one point we ended up with a formation that was three, two, five, and we were creating some amazing football, but it just wasn't going in. Like the back yeah. end of the season was all about us creating, 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 and not finishing. Right? Really wasteful with our final third football. So we finished sixth, missed out on Europe, okay, for the first time in, I think, five years now, three years, three or five years, right? So fine, we'll take the hit, right? Maybe we'll rebuild next year and we'll attack the cup. There's maybe too many games for us, right? But we've got our moment. Our moment to go and hopefully lift a trophy. The first trophy that I'm going to count the save because the, the second division trophy doesn't really count. <laughs> and it's the Greek Cup final against Panathinaikos. And we go into the match with a grayed out goalkeeper whose only previous match was against Pass. And within 25 minutes, we are two goals down. <laughs> and I'm like, this is going to be a long, a long day. Right. Yeah, it's going to be long. Two nil down, and we just sort of talk through a stream, going, "Well, you know what? We've tried. Had someone <laughs> said we'd have been in the semi-finals of Europe, the final of a cup, in with a shout of finishing, we'd have taken that at the start of the mm -hmm. season, and we get a penalty, and JK mm -hmm. tucks it away, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's a little more than a consolation. Maybe we need to take Minas off, who's currently." playing at right wing because, of course, Kaki's injured, so we can't play him either. We've got another one of our centre-backs is suspended. And oh. It's literally just like a patchwork squad. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Knackered as well. And I'm like, right, let's take Minas off. Let's switch things around a bit. And similar to yourself, like the highlight is just about to load up as you've finished making the change. I've clicked what I need to do. Then the highlight plays, the ball comes to Minas on the end of the area, he drops the shoulder, pings it in the top corner. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, you're staying on right now. It's 2-2 two, two, and there's 15 minutes left. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm like, are we going to do it? Are we going to come from behind and win the cup in the most glorious manner? No, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> Because this is me and this is football manager. So oh, with five man. minutes to go, Panathinaikos go down the other end. We are pushing forward because we have been pushing forward to get to, to the two two. We yeah, have yeah. momentum with us. We're still a little bit too far forward, and <laughs> we're hit on the break. And it's three two to Panathinaikos. They win the cup. We go home a little bit sad. Um, and yeah, that was a. I thought that was the end of the stream, but obviously you were in the stream, so you know what happens next. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, right, that's a sad end to the to the season. And I was sort of like licking my wounds a little bit. But but because we're the under 21 Greece manager as well, yeah. we had the under 21 tournament to play out that summer. So I was like, right, come on then, chat. Let's just keep this going. We'll we'll sort of talk through it. And we were in a group with the Netherlands, England, and Scotland. And we drew the Netherlands first match. We beat England 2-0 in the second match. And I was like, hey, we're coasting here. We're sat top of the group, going to our final game against Scotland. We go 1-0 up. And I'm like, I think we've done it, everyone. But I feel bad because if Scotland get a point, they can qualify as well. So I almost talked myself into letting ah. Scotland <laughs> equalise. And I didn't, do, I didn't make any changes at all. But Scotland equalised. And I was cheering <laughs> away going, get it. I think Scotland are going through as well. 
And then Scotland scored three more goals, one four <laughs> one, and knocked us out. <laughs> And I'm just watching it going, what the hell's happening? <laughs> yeah, the football manager is just too funny. The way it plans out, man, it's just too funny. It is honestly oh. just too funny, man. Man, it was just like the absolute roller coaster. Yeah. The emotion that, that led me to the following stream going, Right, everyone, we're doing Moneyball, and I and I did str- I did a stream with <laughs> spreadsheets and trying to work out data. I was like, I think I've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the same does to you, man. That's what the same does to you. I just, oh, it's the fact that it lets you believe, man. It's the fact it lets you believe that like, we've gone like with Tromso. It was like 22, 23 games. It's like you're letting us believe, and then it just goes like that, just like just like just like that. Two injuries in the back, and then one at the front, and then everything just was crumbling, man. <laughs> oh, man, it was it was little things like like I, I I was sort of waking up the next morning going, I think I had two ball winning midfielders. I reckon that was the problem. Like, why <laughs> the next day am I still trying to break this down and analyze it and go right? I'm gonna get on stream and talk about this. And yeah, and I think I have worked out what the problem was, and I think that's why I was like saying right. So I need to recruit in a specific way. And the reason I have to recruit in a specific way is because we've built the nation up. We're now sixth in the coefficients. We've now got three Champions League spots in Greece. Okay. Which means I am about to fail financial fair play for the Champions League. The only season I've spent money, right, has come back to bite me in the backside. And it was two seasons previously. And we're going to fail FFP by about 15 million quid possibly, (laughs) which... In real terms, is a Jonah Kuziazare. <laughs> so we might have to sell him. Oh man, he's going to score the goals then. Yeah, he's out of contract though at the end of the season, and he's got a ten million pound buyout clause, and he's on fifty grand. And the next player, I think, is Kaki's on twenty eight. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he needs to go. Yeah, but the yeah, only that club one. that wants him, AEK Athens. Out of all the clubs, only yeah, them. Yeah, the Saudi Arabian clubs. I managed to put them off the year before. <laughs> in from, but oh, that was mental. So I was like, well, maybe you should leave. And then because because I was like, don't like cut your jib anymore. <laughs> so he's falling out with me now. I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Sometimes when your best player does leave, though, that's when things really do start to click. So oh, hundred percent. And like that's why the spreadsheets were out because I was like, right, what we need to do is we need to get a player who can do what Kuzezara could do. For yeah, a heck of a lot cheaper because his way just need to cover four players. <laughs> <Point out. laughs> and we uh, and we did it. We got we brought in some bargains, I think, or some players that would have looked to be underappreciated. And it was yeah, a yeah. really interesting way of doing it. Like we had the Musterman episode on Patreon the yeah. other week, so go and check that out. And he's going to come on the show to talk through what I didn't do properly um, <laughs> <laughs> in the future. And um, and yeah, it's it's oh man, it's. Yeah, it's interesting. It's really interesting. The football manager plays with us too much, man. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, oh, we play it too much. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of that. Maybe it's a bit of that. I think we see more than, than maybe the average players do because, yeah, we probably do consume a little bit more time. But I, I think know, it's it's, the stories now, it's just, it's just yeah. endless, though, isn't it? Yeah, the story is just each season is just endless, man. It's just, yeah. uh, oh, man. I, I think, I think, and this goes back to a point that I think we've made historically many, many times. I think because we don't control any of it, that's where the frustration comes in. Like, if you yeah, can see yeah, it yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, like, you can see it coming. It's not like on other playable video games like FIFA or whatever, where if you don't stop the tackle, you know that's on you. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. Whereas yeah. with Football Manager, you see the player just do the thing. You're like, why has he been programmed to do that? Like, like, <laughs> why did the pixels do what the pixels did? <laughs> oh man, amazing! Man. So yeah, so that's been fun. So we'll obviously do a bit more update with Greece uh, next week, and because it's season ten, Aaron, what I've decided to do is I'm going to start uploading those ten season save data files into. Our Z-Patreon. Patreon. There you go. <laughs> so if you are interested in signing up for Patreon, you can do so from as little as three pounds a month. Um, you get 
exclusive bonus content, don't you, Aaron? Oh, yes, you do. You get a weekly episode every single Monday. There's about, Ooh. I think we worked out, there's about 30 hours at least worth of additional bonus content over on Patreon. And the save files in there as well. Uh, of course, my 10 individual seasons of Build a Nation with us. So you can pick the save up at any point and explore. Maybe you want to go and do some data mining yourself. You can do that. Aaron popped a behind the scenes video of his Everton rebuild in there on Patreon as well, which is amazing, by the way. I really love that video. So go and check that out as well. We should say a massive thank you to Marcus, Ross Kinder, Paul Custis, and Bizarra Brigade, who came and joined the squad <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. So appreciate you all. Your support is absolutely appreciated. And remember, of course, if you can't afford to support us via Patreon, there is always a free weekly public episode here on youtube spotify wherever you get your podcast from just obviously make sure you drop a follow a like a subscribe and leave a comment all sorts of things but if you want to support us on patreon aaron where do they go they go to patreon.com the fm show pod that's patreon.com forward slash the fm show pod i was just going to say as well talking about those recordings do let us or let me know i was going to say because i do want to do something similar with like uh, the community challenge so I'm probably just going to play like a year with a team in Portugal. But it'll be a similar video where I'm recording and it might be a tactic that I'm, a tactic I'm working on or it might just, I might just build a tactic from the whatever we see on the screen and then just play a few games there. And then I'll just update it on Twitter, uh, on the Patreon. But do let me know if you do want to see it because obviously we don't, I don't want to be giving people just Patreon notifications of content that they do not want to see. So do let me know. It's time to say hello to the newest sponsor of the FM show. Everybody, say hello to Full Time Prints. Full Time Prints offer a variety of prints to give football fans the chance to remember their favourite football moments forever. They currently offer a range of goals, team sheets, commentary and league tables. Prints are available in A4 through to A1 and can be bought with or without a frame. It makes the perfect gift for occasions such as Christmas, birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just because presents. Like, seriously, this is the perfect gift for every football fan. You want to go on the website, browse what they've got. They've got so many things to choose from, whether it's teams, European teams, international teams, moments that happen. And if you can't find something you like, you can even do a custom request. You can create anything you've seen yourself. Maybe you've seen a goal you want to relive. You can have that. Maybe you want to relive the first match you ever attended. Or maybe if you're a football manager fan, you might want to do a custom one just designed for football manager that immortalizes your save forever. You can have a print done that has all your trophies, the entirety of the save, the key moments. Maybe you want to relive the Champions League final and have your team sheet and everything on there. You can do that with full-time prints. I'm thinking I'll get myself one and I'm going to put it right behind my head in my office just behind here. And as a little sweetener for you, we've got a little bit of discount to help you out here. So use the code THEFMSHOW. We'll get you 10% off your entire order. Go to fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code THEFMSHOW. That's 10% off your entire order. And there's free shipping on orders over 50 quid. So go get yourself a full-time print. Immortalize that football manager save. Let us know what you've got. Visit fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code the FM Show. Get yourself ten percent off, and remember, free shipping on orders over fifty quid. So, as Aaron was just touching upon there, in our last episode, which if you haven't listened or watched, go back and have a watch with the wonderful FM Llama. We talked about youth only saves, which kind of got our creative juices flowing a little bit yeah. Aaron um we had a wonderful comment from NUFC Pro 90 on YouTube that just says I bloody love llama which I think is <laughs> is echoed across the land yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I mean they call him a llama but we we say he's a goat do you know what I mean I mean, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> um and it's it's just great like it was a lovely conversation about llama um and in that in that something got announced and you've already touched upon it. We talked about the community challenge yeah. and people have been asking for this for a while, Aaron, and we've been a little bit arm's length with it. Haven't we? But, <laughs> but we've relented. 
I, I forgot about that. I forgot. <laughs> you see, this sometimes I get wrapped up in the moment. So obviously, because it was announced already, I just ran and ran off with it um, in the Patreon little segment there. But yeah, we do have the Portugal. See, I can't wait. I can't wait for this one. I'm interested and intrigued to see people's results with this Portugal one. I'm really interested. I want to see what teams people pick as well because they can pick from three different that's, teams. That's the thing, isn't it? That's the thing. So let's do a quick recap then, right? For, if you didn't listen to the to last week's show, basically what we've got, right? The the community challenge is going to be over. We we're saying three to five seasons, right? The reason we're saying three yeah. to five seasons is we're thinking that the challenge should go to about maybe June when something else in football happens around about the time of June. <laughs> Work that out for yourselves. I'm sure you've already worked out what we're doing in June as the challenge. <laughs> 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 but let's get a little end of season challenge done, something that's a bit different, something that's a bit fun, something that's quite balanced as well, I think, to be honest. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. We want it to be, we don't just want it to be a, a league that, everyone's done lots of but it also needs to be familiar enough that it's not alien and it doesn't put people off so yeah yeah portugal was the the nation that we picked and we didn't want to be really restrictive in who you managed because that can obviously sometimes be a bit of a put off for people as well but i'm not managing that team I'm, i support their rivals or oh god you know i don't like the way that's set up so we thought how about we do portugal and you can pick we thought any of the top three, so Porto, Benfica, or Sporting Club. Um, the reason we picked those was because they are probably <laughs> the ones more likely to get some of that success that people talk yeah. about, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly that. So obviously, Porto, Benfica, Sporting, all good teams, all in Europe as well, mm. I believe, before I should <laughs> go and put that there. But... <laughs> Also, you don't just have to be those three teams if you don't want. Mm -hmm. Of course, the um, the community challenge is designed to be fun. So that's why we picked those three teams. We don't want to give you a team that's re almost relegated and then you, everyone has to be that sort of team. And we've got to try and do something in three to five years. We're actually picking this team. So based off our previous episode, you can take a save idea from it, hints and tips idea, and you can apply it into the save as well. So for an example... Lama spoke about you've only saved in the last episode and then you've got three good teams here, all got brilliant new facilities and again, it's what you can do. Maybe set yourself a challenge, not sign anyone within those five years and hope someone comes through the ben uh, Benfica youth system. Mm. It's, it's all up to you. It's all up to you. Yeah, or get the maps out and try and sign players from the local area, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that as well, couldn't you? Um, but, you know, as, as Aaron says, you, it, you're not restricted to those three sides, right? The reason we picked Porto, Benfica and Sporting, we figured they're the easiest, quote-unquote, easiest ones to start off with, right? And they've got a bit of a story. And, you know, Porto, it's it's 20 years this year since they won the Champions League. And mm. there was a certain special manager helped them do that on a very special Easy team. Special. Easy um, special one. So can you basically recreate that can you become the champions of europe with porto again um mm -hmm. benfica have won the, the european cup twice but they've not won it for a while as they <laughs> were cursed by their former manager so <laughs> can you break the bella gutman curse the man who said that that club will never win the champions league for the next hundred years um, oh. so i mean you know what that team couldn't win a champions league with saviola and cardozo up front so let's see what <laughs> you can do right okay i'm not saying there's pressure uh. but that is pressure right there <laughs> di maria popping the balls in the wing as well and they didn't win something come off it uh um, yeah. or what about sporting then aaron maybe you know they've not won the european honors that porto and, and benfica have won but they are humbly uh in the in the the, the ranks of, <laughs> of the 19 titles is humbly. Humbled, you know what I mean? like 19 yeah, titles, yeah. 17 cups and they've got one of the most exciting managers in current football in, in Amory, yeah. and gokoresh is canny class i was just like, gonna just... say yeah they've out of the three they've probably got my favorite the favorite team 
Obviously, you've got Dia Monde as well, Marcus mm-hmm. Edwards, Marcus Chacau, Edwards great shout. Pedro Gonzalez, mm-hmm. uh, Nuno Santos, the left wing back that's just got that absolute tackers. So I done a rumor in, uh, Ruben Amarim tactic, and okay. I've done a similar thing again where I recorded a game and I put it on Twitter, and Nuno Santos just got the most dirtiest goal. So they're, yeah, they're going to be a fun team, the most fun team, I think. Porto's team are probably the one I would make pragmatic mm-hmm. I think I'll be having fun making them a difficult obviously I'm, I think I'm now but I just realised what something I watched them against Arsenal that's why I'm thinking <laughs> that's why I'm thinking that I watched them against, yeah. Ars- against Arsenal they were very very good out of possession and mm-hmm. again it's something that you might want to try and apply in FM because you you kind of got some leeway to do it right because you're yeah. kind of sort of expected to win these games anyway. So maybe you've got another opportunity to try these things, a formation that you haven't tried out before, mm. which might be a 4 4 2 because I'm scared of that in FM. <laughs> you are terrified of that, aren't you? Yeah, just two midfielders. Oh, yikes. Mm. So that's the thing. So you can do that. So you, like, so you can do that. You can do Paul, you can do Benfica, you can do, do sporting, right? That's, that's what we are laying down as hey, probably the easiest way to do this thing. If you don't want to yeah. do those three clubs, as we say, you can make it harder. You can go and pick clubs from little step down in the league, like Braga, Boa Vista, uh, Boa Vista, sorry, Boa Vista, yeah. Um, you can step down again, uh, Maritimo, like you can step down again, like Rio Ave. Like that's, that's really low down, isn't it? Like you're going... Yeah, that, yeah that, that, I had them in FM23 as well. Yeah. Which is, this is why I can vouch that Portuguese league is a very fun league. So there's, other, there's two other teams that I did pick out, which was Casa Pia who have a very decent uh, squad, also got very decent youth facilities. Again, leading, leaning, 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 leaning towards that youth only save uh, sort of. They've also got one of my favourite left-backs on Football Manager, uh, Leonardo Lello. Mm-hmm. Very cheap, so make sure you give him a new contract straight away. But there's also Vittoria, I believe the team's yeah. name is. Yeah, Vittoria. They're also another very decent team as well. They've got a player up front called Andre Silva, very good. Thomas Handel, I've had him for Manager mm-hmm. before as well, centre midfielder. They've got a centre back with 17 jumping reach. Can't head it though, but it's just... I mean, as long as he's <laughs> up in the air, like, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm just using like, you know, like a broom when you're trying to get something out of a tree. I'm just doing that. <laughs> His value makes me laugh as well. He's valued from 10k to 2.6 million. So it's gone from, <laughs> from 10 pounds a pound to 2.6 million. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that as well. And when you ask the agent, how much is he worth? He was like, I oh, could be anything, mate. Yeah. Could be yeah. anything. No <laughs> could idea. Be anything. <laughs> could be anything. Yeah. Throwing the offer. Yeah. Three it depends on the day, lad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, but I think that's interesting. I think, I, and the more I think about this, the more I'm starting to like the idea that we've picked with Portugal because... My thinking is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, because you've done Portugal. I, yeah. I haven't managed in Portugal for a long time. Maybe championship manager time would have been when I was last in Ooh. Portugal. Or maybe the back end. No, maybe F, maybe FM9 or something. Like, it might Ooh. have been that Benfica, Cardozo, Salaiola thing. I might, have been, I might have done that. That might have been my last little toe dip into Portugal. Um, so we are talking a while. But from what I remember, is it's not that, quote-unquote, that difficult to break into that top three from one of the smaller clubs. You could, It's not like taking Luton <clears throat> and getting them into the Champions League in season one. Like, Luton to the title in five years? Unlikely. Yeah. Unlikely. Because think about it, like, cause the Premier League is going to be more difficult to break in, right, that top mm-hmm. six sort of, because there's so many, or the top four, I should say, because there's so many clubs there's already around six, seven top teams that are trying to get that you're top looking four. at. Yeah, so yeah. before you're even thinking about, or maybe, maybe Aston Villa is not a good, <laughs> a good club to use now because of what they're doing at the moment. But let's just say you're not, if you're on mid table side, you're sort of looking up and that, yeah, that's very difficult to break because if those four teams don't get in, these other three can sort of thing. But whereas in Portugal, it's only really Benfica, Porto, Sporting, and someone's always going to have an off season. Mm-hmm. There's not three teams that are going to be absolutely running away with it so there's always going to be that opportunity it's likely going to be you and somebody else though <laughs> mm. can I just put half a thought that I've just had in my head right is that with the latest data update is it possible that say for example 
say you pick for ease Porto or Benfica, uh, Porto or Benfica, is it possible that maybe at the end of season one, Sporting's manager leaves for one of the high profile positions that have become available at the end of season one? Oh my days. <laughs> if you're one of the lower teams, do you have a chance of, of getting into that next bit? That's what I was, oh, imagine that. That Amarim might go to, because there's a couple of jobs that come available at the end of season one yeah. in real life football. If you're Starting the community it. challenge at Casapia, <laughs> ended it at Porto. <laughs> do you know what? What a oh, story that days. is though. What a story that you end up jumping up because you've done a cracking first season. You then get like sort of airlifted in. Yeah. Oh, mate, the stories you can have tell you, here. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever been at a club? You've got your project, and then you've just seen that that inbox this year. This club wants you, and she's like, "Oh, man, it's the the right things to move," and you just move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> have you done that before? Yeah, yeah, I've done that before. I've done that before. <laughs> and like, but I've also, but I've also dug my heels in, and I know this makes sense, but I'm here for the long, the long sad haul. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I've got that challenge. I've set it. I'm adamant, so I'm just I'm going for it. None of that leaving business. But there's sometimes, like, even this save, I've set it up because I've set it up, I'm like, yeah, Trump's or blah, 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 blah. Mm. But then in the back of my mind, I was like, actually, I'm going to leave all of these leagues playable. Just, you know, just when it gets to that, just, just, you know, in case. Just, in yeah. case, just in case, you know. But yeah, I'm hoping, because my save is it's, it's similar to yours in a, in a way. It's more of a, like, we're trying to, I am trying to build a nation, which mm. can, can happen a bit more naturally, but also sort of youth intake as well mm-hmm. so I'm kind of mixing things in it's yeah. not youth only I can buy players but they're going to be young players anyway so it's a lot of about development I should say the what, same about what I worked out during my save last week was in my moment of sadness when like realising that I'd missed out on Europe and I'd, I'd lost the cup when I saw that the, that the coefficients had risen to sixth and we got these extra Champions League spot I was like you know what I can build a nation without actually winning anything. And that, oh, yeah, and I remember that just that was like a massive moment of clarity. I was like, this is the perfect I way that. for me to do it. I can be the, I can absolutely be second the feeder best. Club. <laughs> the feeder club, yeah, just the feeder. Just take these youngsters and be like, yeah, here you go, let me your boss. Hey, you go, panel for that cost. <laughs> just say, hey, you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, being, I'm, I'm, Brian. I'm just being the, the, I'm being the spotter. Just like <laughs> if, if, AK, if AK can't do the rep, I'll jump in. But if not, like let them go and do it. I've seen you've got a new daddy as well. So you, again, you're going to be taking those players from Dortmund. Be like, oh hey, yeah, that was interesting. You should look, look at this lad. Look at this lad. That was interesting. So, so because of the fact that we were looking to fail financial fair play, it was a mo- it, was, it was a moment of starting <sighs> to gamify it because I, I try to not gamify the the save. But I was like, we need to bring money in. So I was like, right, I'm in the in the uh, in the door of the chairman, going, right. How's about we get one of those affiliate clubs where you, they give us loads of money? And he's like, no, we don't need that. And I'm like, but we need the money. Like, come on, you know, you need this. <laughs> and he's like, right, you make a good argument. I'll go off and I'll see who we can who we can drum up business from. And obviously, in my head, I'm like. Oh God, it's going to end up being Newcastle, isn't it? And I'm going to have that ethical dilemma, and I'm not going to take the money. I'm just going to end up shoot myself in the foot. And we roll a couple of days on, and Newcastle is one of the clubs that have come forward. So I'm not them at all. Um, they offered the most money, obviously, but yeah, yeah, then yeah. there was Dortmund, and I was like, "Ooh, hello!" And then there was Liverpool, and of oh, course, yeah, yeah, both no, of yeah, those yeah. clubs, Dortmund and Liverpool, both Dortmund and Liverpool, both said we can have some youngsters for no money, and we will essentially take your players for money. And I was like, "That's pretty good. Uh, that makes sense," but. Dortmund just fit right and they paid a tiny bit more than Liverpool as well mm. tiny bit more and they had more players available for loan um, straight away so I was like right let's go Dortmund not as many players as Valencia offered us by the way which was half of the <laughs> yeah, team I saw the list I saw the list I saw the list, I saw the list. <laughs> is it because they've got oh, not is it because Spain have got like a Villarreal is it because they've got Three different, so they've got the Villarreal, but then is it because they've got the BC and then on the 19th, yeah? But like poor Villarreal, like just they wanted a text back, and I was just like, I just left them on red. I was just like, yeah, oh, people, <laughs> people in the coverage just, like, just so just, they're, they're still on the phone. <laughs> they should text back any minute now. It's <laughs> probably want to know what's happening. Well, that's interesting. They've got a link up with Dortmund as well. That's really cool. <laughs> Hello, this will look brilliant for the promotional material. 
Oh man, yeah. poor Villarreal had their yeah. social posts ready and everything. Oh, it's, it's all in the drafts, Tony. It's all in the drafts. I know. I felt bad. Like I was gonna get dressed up as Yellow Submarine. It was gonna be awesome. <laughs> they were doing <laughs> gifts. It was gonna be brilliant. But I, I just but, I ruined it, didn't I? I ghosted them. That's, I was thinking about sort of um, FM twenty five wish list, but not like major things. Just mm-hmm. little things that. Because I saw, is it Dan Gare? Dan Gare, yeah, I think, yeah. from uh, View from the Touchline. You talk about directors of football and how they can be... Because someone asked, what's the difference between a technical director and a director of football in Football Manager? Like, you can't really... Like, what's the purpose of having both? It's, at a, it's just an expense at, the, at this point. Yeah. And then, obviously, Dan explained the difference. But what could be added is that maybe you're trying to approach... So, obviously, your club's got a board. It's got a culture, right? So, like, if you're going to be Atletico... It's going to be that play direct football. But then you might have seen this one, the kid that's just tiny and he's quite skillful, he's tiny, and yeah, the next hot thing. And then you go and put this 60 million offer, and your director of football is just like, nah, he does not fit the, the clubs. He, that that the sort of thing, if that, yeah, the model, yeah, if that sort of thing could be implemented in the game. Because I was just thinking about that as well with just many things that like there could be something coming in, even when it comes to feeder club. Like, I do think Liverpool, Dortmund, Newcastle, I think that they're all just three very different clubs. Massively different course, clubs, yeah. Of course, you should maybe have the freedom of you being, that is your save, it's your choice. But at the same time, maybe because you've picked the club, the club is looking to go. Maybe it shouldn't be so like very structured and disciplined, but mm. there's certain things like a feeder club. Mm. It's still giving you an option, but it's giving you an option of these clubs because this is what fits the club as well. Like Liverpool's, Liverpool's mm. culture, it sort of matches ours. Like short football, quick tempo, whatever it is. Yeah. But if someone else's structure is long ball and you're trying to loan players from them, like it doesn't really match. Mm. So maybe like they can, someone can step in and be like, this is this is not going to work for <laughs> this is not going to work for us, yeah, mate. Big that, someone else. That makes complete sense. And even then, you could have the board could just override it so that it's like right, no, no, yeah. like, like the direct the technical director is in charge of all of this, like that. They yeah, have yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know, this is I know it's one of the the most fun parts of the game is buying players, but to have a a sporting director or a technical director go these are the play- these are the players that we're going for right yeah they're going to turn up you're going to manage them you're the football manager or or head coach like yeah, you know, could yeah. you play is is there a way of doing head coach mode successfully yeah, yeah, in football yeah, manager yeah. i don't so, know if there really is because i don't think that no, I don't, the <sighs> director of football or the, or the or the head of youth development would look in terms of that statistical exactly. approach Exactly, it's not that. quite implemented as much. Exactly, yeah, You'd yeah. You have to be your own technical director and put your own yeah, yeah. on the transfer. That makes sense. Exactly, yeah. And I guess like the spin is like that is the sole purpose of having a director of football, right? Mm. So I don't think people like there shouldn't be a complaint from people. Oh, they cancelled my fit. My director of football cancelled. Is like you should have had a director of football sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Obviously, I guess director of football have maybe his little tendencies as well could they have a profile page but mm-hmm. I think that could be a cool way of getting these backroom staff to be to have more of an input in your game more of an effective input as well I like, like I've hired you for I hired you for this reason because you like football played in this way and now you're telling me look we're not buying this guy because he does not fit our approach yeah. I think that makes that's a good that's a good addition I think I it's think. great and I think it, it the argument has always been I'm going to use a really extreme argument here the argument has always been <laughs> that, that SI will not do stadium upgrades and like you design your stadium because that's not the manager's job. Yeah. 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 What's becoming increasingly likely now is that transfers are not the manager's job. Like, exactly. Transfers yeah. are now another club's job. It's now the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now the head of recruitment's job. So technically, and I know it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen, but SI could take transfers away from us completely because yeah, that's not there's the so many things. Job. There's so many exactly. There's so many things that they could just take away from us as well. But yeah, I mean, people always complain about something, won't they? Or yeah. they'll try and make like a silly comparison in, a, in an argument that just there shouldn't really be a debate about. But but I think it's also as well. It's it's in, it's interesting in the timing at uh, time of recording the these head of recruitments are going for massive money now. Like clubs are spending mm-hmm. a lot. On recruitment, yeah, and uh, who's, who's man, what's Man United trying to get as well? What's that role? United are trying to get. Um, it, is it, the, the, is it a director of football? Yeah, it's Will. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's Wilcox from from Southampton, and even Dan that, Ashworth like, from Newcastle. 
So that's becoming news as like a normal transfer. Like people are reporting on it like it's a transfer. So these things are becoming sort of big. Obviously, you don't want football manager to replicate football to a T, obviously, because mm. it has to still have that game element, that fun element about it. But again, I still to me that's fun anyway. To me, mm. it's fun to have a director of football. Obviously, the issue would be that you start sometimes you're gonna start with a director of football, so that might obviously be an issue. But I do think there is a cool way of imp- implementing that sort of stuff mm. in the game. But but I think if, if you see journey person careers or you see like changes of ownership at a club, yeah. you see these changes come in in real life. And, you know, the manager might well have had a great relationship with the chairperson before and had a really, really lovely time. But there's a takeover, new person's in charge. They've got their way of doing business. All of a sudden they bring in their backroom staff, their um, <laughs> advisors, <laughs> And they're sort of going, right, well, you know, we want to do it this way. We want to do a, yeah. you know, we want to basically don't lose money. We want to make money. We want to be sustainable. So therefore, this is how we're going to do it. It's We're going to run it like a business. And I guess the current manager is going to go, well, I was given leeway on transfers here. I'm not being told it was sign. And at that point, it, it creates another dynamic in the game that creates the narrative to go, right, do you suck it up because you like the job? Or do you go, you know what? No, this is not what I signed up for. And you walk. like. Yeah, yeah, there just yeah. Needs to be no, the jeopardy element isn't there, or the or the change of dynamics not there. That's I don't know thing. You... I was gonna say, I thought is a is a dynamic club culture and I don't know if it's dynamic. Potentially, I can't remember. I think it's meant to be, isn't it? It is meant to be. Like it can change over time. Like if you, they're not going to be the fans aren't going to be locked down on using set pieces if you're if you're clearly not going to use them or you're becoming more successful in other areas. They'll be like uh, yeah, if you yeah. sort of want to be more free-flowing entertaining fans aren't gonna be going breath but we'd rather we were defensively solid they're gonna be like we won 10 cups mm, yeah this is fine you know <laughs> i do think for manager got the balance with that though uh, mm. right like with the club culture like if you don't achieve it it's not like it's just ruins of saving and they start complaining and everyone's coming to sort of thing and you get fired or like you know what i mean i think it's, a, it's when they introduced it it was always a nice uh introduction to the game as well well, again, just, I'm hoping they can do that sort of stuff with the staff as well, like we just mentioned. Yeah. Again, it's another replication of of, of, of real life. God, listen, it's me talking about real life footballers if I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, like, I mean, look, David Moyes at West Ham. I was talking to my mate, mate of mine's a West Ham fan. And I was saying, he says, oh, says you're having a decent enough season, aren't you? You've won a European Cup last year. You, you, like, why are you still wanting David Moyes out? And he's like, oh, football's boring. Like yeah, we're, we're like <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're in the top half of the table. We, we, what, with all due respect, you know, you're not going to be challenging for the top four because, as we've said before, there's a, a queue of teams trying to get in. That yeah, top yeah, four. yeah. You know, you've just won a cup the the previous season. You you constantly buying strikers and never playing them and then sell them on. Like, so is it just coming down to entertainment value? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all right, get ready, get a new manager in. Like, okay, <laughs> what do fans want these days? <laughs> exactly that. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing, man. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to. Think. I'm just imagining it in a game now. I am just imagining it. <laughs> but but it, but it makes sense. But it makes sense that like you always you always see as well. Whenever there's a vacancy comes up, like again, we'll we'll just pull a name out of the air just because he's, he's like. If you say Sam Allardyce, for example, yeah. people already have an image in their head of oh, Sam Allardyce is this. No, he's not. <laughs> but that's the impression that they've got. So they therefore go, well, we don't want it because then they'll play a certain way. Um, Southgate is getting a reputation for being this kind of manager, you know? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Sometimes that manager is just working with what they have in front of them. Like they're, they're maybe not that kind of manager, but the players <laughs> they've got mean they have to play a certain way or the pressure they're under from someone else is why they're playing a certain way. We don't know. Yeah. That's a bit... Uh... Man, just so excited about FM25. Now I'm just sitting here just thinking about FM25. That's what if I had to write down bring, bring FM28. FM28. That's what I want. I want to see that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how old am I now? What year are we in? Four more years. Four FM, years FM28. Yeah. Yeah. We'll still be doing well, this as well. Be yeah, brilliant. I still feel, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, in my head, I don't know why that just sounded like so far away. But that's still local. Yeah, man, that's still local time. I'll yeah. be about. Yeah. So, so if we scan, trying to crack the game, scan perfect, it back then, because in that four years you'd still be playing FM Community Challenges, right? Um, 
let's look at this then. Okay, so let, let's let's <laughs> dial it back. So, Porto Benfica Sporting, can you give us a little bit of a hint or tip on any of those teams? Have you used any of those ones before? Obviously, you've mentioned you've been making videos about uh, Sporting, um, which of course we'll have a link in the description below yeah. if anybody wants a little tactical advice um for starting their save um yeah anything you've seen because those those three sides play very differently you mentioned about Paul being quite pragmatic and well disciplined and i've got in my head i've got benfica being a bit like silky and then i've got sporting yeah. just doing like absolute business they're, 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 they are all three very different teams use three different shapes as well. So with um, that's the thing with Fort Manager as well. In Fort Manager, not necessarily down to Fort Manager, but in the game, obviously the squads are designed or the squads of real life squads. So what the managers played in real life, it you tend to unless you've got a ready a tactic that you're just gonna force the team to play. But a lot of the times if you're trying to create a tactic with what you got in the game, a lot of the times you are just going to use the formation that they're doing in real life mm -hmm. with sporting. If you look at the squad, I mean, there's about 25 centre-backs here. So you're kind of like forced to play a back three. A 3-4-3, three, three, in my opinion. So that's three centre-backs, two DMs, two wing-backs. And then you've got the choice to either use two wingers or two attack midfielders. It depends how narrow you want your attack. Mm -hmm. And then the one man up front, that Yorkadesh, Victor Yorkadesh up front. Oh, he's amazing. He's amazing. So that's the formation that I would go with. With the team tactical style, I would say more vertical tiki tackle looking to try and play through the middle. It doesn't have to be fast. It could be slow tempo. You've got the players for that. In midfield, Morton Hoidman, mm -hmm. and Hid and Marita. I'm not going to attempt the first name. <laughs> Marita. <laughs> they both can win the ball back for you. They're both agile as well. They can move up and down the pitch. They're both aggressive to win the ball back, but they're also very good on the ball in possession. I mentioned Nuno Santos before, which is an absolute amazing fullback. So Sporting, for me, are the one to go to. For Porto, I will be looking more at a 4-2-4. I would say they use more, more of a 4-4-2, four, 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 possibly. Mm -hmm. But the squad, as it's got uh, Conten Sao, Ivan Jame, you get him? I don't even know. My pronunciation on some of these players' names are awful. I'm leaving it to you, mate, because otherwise I'm going to butcher it as well. So. <laughs> and you've got Gallardo as well. You've got Gallardo, probably the best winger, possibly the best winger in the league. Mm -hmm. So you've got these guys up, but they're very attacking. So I would I would use more sort of a 4 2 4. And then you've got Alan Varela as well, Marco Grigic, who can play in defensive midfield. You haven't really got a centre midfield or attack midfielder there. So you're, again, you're sort of forced to play with a back four and then defensive midfielders wingers and strikers because you've got good strikers as well Tony Martinez can score you goals in this league Medi Tarami and of course Ivan Nilsson you probably don't want any of them on the bench in this league mm -hmm. so you're going to again you're going to be forced to play with two strikers here I think with Porto and with its style of play I would say Gegen Press they're all fairly aggressive hard working that is what Constance wants you don't have to play a high press you can drop it down to mid block you can choose what you want but I think to get the best out of these players and their attributes, it would be to be fairly aggressive off the ball to fully utilise what's there at the squad. Now with Benfica, I do find the squad is a little bit more fluid in what you can do here. You can attempt to back three. You might want to sign an additional one just for backup. But you've got Morato, Antonio Silva and Otamendi. You can absolutely play a back three here. Or you can play a back four and have one on the bench for backup. You got a pair of attacking fullbacks, so they're likely going to get up the field. In midfield, you got Florentino Luis. This guy's been very interesting for me in football manager throughout the years. He's supposed to be a one the kid. He should have been. Is it difficult? It's harsh to say a better player considering I'm behind the computer and this guy's a professional <laughs> footballer. <laughs> well, he hasn't got a podcast, Aaron. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you can kind of get you, you can kind of see where I'm going with that one there. But he's still very good in the game, which is what I like as well. He's tackling his 18, position 16, teamwork 17, work rate 16. His value though is fairly low. I would kind of look at that. I wouldn't want to sell him. And then attack again. You've got players like Di Maria. David Neres, Jean Mario, who can play in multiple positions, Rafa. So, hey, you're actually, you've got multiple options. I would say 4 3 3 or 4 2 3 1, again, to try and get the best out of these sort of players. But you've, you've got that. You've got the option to go with whatever. And again, when it comes to the tactical style, you've got the control possession, gig and press, tiki tackle or vertical tackle are the proactive uh, 
tactical styles and those are the ones I'll be looking to go for. Doesn't mean to ignore wing play or fluid counter attack because you can absolutely choose one of these presets and then easily just tweak it so it's more suitable to the tactic. If you don't know what to do, so in your tactic screen over to the right hand side, you've got like selection advice and quick pick. So what you can do is use quick pick. There's a little drop down menu, mm -hmm. go to pick without restriction and then pick the best 11. And now your assistant will sort of give you an idea of what the best 11 is. And again, pick that drop down menu and you've got pick roles and duties. And now your assistant will sort of find roles and duties that he thinks will combine well, but also what suits the players that are on the pitch. Mm, yeah, exactly. Remember, there's always little hints and tips in this game for us, isn't there? If you don't know mm -hmm, the clubs yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. well. And then if you were to take a little look around at some other sides as well, you mentioned Vittorio and yeah. your team. What's, what's, what's the rationale behind that? What stands out for you there? Uh, it's mostly the youth facilities, mm -hmm. the youth facilities and the decent squad. So this is one of the squads that we were talking about earlier that are able to sort of push for those mm -hmm. top three spots. Uh, the key players here, we've got Andre Silva, who is a winger slash striker. I'll probably play him up front. He likes to shoot from distance. And if, you, if you've seen long shots in this game, oof, they can be amazing. Mm -hmm. So he could be a little firecracker. Bruno Varela is a goalkeeper. Um, pretty decent. Now, he doesn't command his area very well. But, I mean, he's got reflexes. He can kick the ball. Decent one-on-ones. So he seems like he's a super keeper, but just watch out for that command of area. Mm -hmm. Make sure you've got centre-backs like, who can command the box instead. Thiago Silva's more of a playmaking midfielder, aggressive midfielder. He's got a high work rate. He's, this guy's a very decent player. I've never come across him, but I mean, he's 30 years old. He's 30 years old. So he's probably not a player that you will sign, but if he's in your squad, you're always going to play him. Or all these, he's all round, all round. The best thing about him is his work rate, but he's very good technically. You also got João Mendes, another playmaker in the side. Mikel Villanueva. This is the guy that we mentioned earlier with mm -hmm. seven in jumper reach, but just can't head the ball. And then we've got Jota Silva as well. Another attacker who's got decent flair, decent dribbling. So you've got some creative players, some fun players. Defensively mm -hmm. is possibly where you're going to struggle. Tactically, I'm not that familiar with the squad, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't give any advice on that. And then lastly, the other team was Casapia, who's a little bit behind Vittoria, but again, got a very decent squad. The key players are Pablo Roberto, Another one of those midfielders who can create, but he would love to work hard. 18 aggression, uh, 13 work rate, but then his vision's on 15. Mm -hmm. We've got Leonardo Lelo, Lelo, who I've signed about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times on Football Manager already, mm -hmm. dating back from is, FN23. Is he this year's Gallardo for you? Is he? Yeah, uh, he's, he's like, his value now is 1.8 million. If I, I don't want to really go through all his attributes for the audio listeners, but for those looking um, or listening to me on YouTube or whatever it is, the acceleration, 15, pace, 14, stamina, 14, fitness, 16, determination, 16, flair, 13, off the ball, 13, teamwork, vision, work rate, tackling, technique, penalties. He's got all of it. The first touch, dribbling and uh, crossing is on 12, but he's 23 and this stuff does get better as well. The value is 1.2 to 1.8 million. That is ridiculously low. At the start of this save though, the save file that you've got, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham and Braga are after him. We've also got Yo Yuki Soma. Yuki Soma, a winger. Mm -hmm. He can play wing back as well. So if you want to play a, a back three, he's going to be a very attacking wing back. And then we've got Clayton as well up front, who's another... Aggr you know what? There's some very aggressive players in Portugal, Tony. Mm -hmm. What's happening yeah. over here? What's <laughs> well, I'm clicking on this like aggression 17. What's going on here? Yeah, well, this is this is what's going to lead me into the next little bit, really, isn't it? Like we've, we've touched a little bit about, about tactical styles and I know we've floated the idea that it's all silky and it's skillful and it's technical but i think it's got a little bit more grit and roughy redness yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not quite you know like uh, el clasico la liga well, i suppose el clasico yeah. got a bite to it, isn't it it's but it's it's got a little shade of the dark it's 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 athletic over it. it's 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it. like... yeah it's the dark parts it's a bit a little bit like france as well i remember yeah. players speaking about france and how like we talk about the intensity and stuff in and how physical it is. Not even really the intensity, but how physical it is in England. And France is very similar in how physical it is. So it's not a surprise with some of these players that can translate well from League 1 to the Premier League. Even like Mahrez, like you should look at him. Or Dimitri Payet. You look at these guys and you're like, ah, oh, they might not hack it in the Premier League. 
The and they come and they just absolutely ruined, yeah. yeah. Especially like Mahrez, like he's been through all those rough challenges, people trying to, if you look at Mbappe's legs after a game as well, like do people, this is what uh, the league undo to people as well. That like, little kick over, kick the people about and stuff like that. But this is where Mahrez practice and is he able to skip those challenges, comes to the Premier League, cuts in, skip those challenges and it's a little too easy for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've mentioned something that's interesting as well in the fact that um, Rio Ave, is it Rio Ave there, had a player that was ready for sale to the Premier League? Uh, um, Casapia. Casapia, sorry. I have a player that's ready for sale for the Premier League. Um, in terms of generating cash for Portugal, what do the league rules look like? What's the restrictions? Have we got anything on there? Players we can sign, players we can't sign? Like, are we stuck for a foreigner limit rule or is it pretty lax? It looks pretty lax. So I'm looking at the transfer relegation rules. It's just got, it's telling me loan rules. There's no real transfer rules here. So squad rep, uh, squad registration, we've got minimum of seven, uh, seven first team year senior players in the squad. I mean, <laughs> you need at least 11 <laughs> if you only register seven you'll be fine right <laughs> quick question just while this episode's on have you subscribed to the fm show either on youtube or wherever you get your podcast from if you're listening on audio feed if you haven't can we ask a little favour? Maybe you might want to consider doing that. You might want to help us out. If you do want to help us out, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us. Of course, if you leave a like on the video, if you've enjoyed it, leave a comment below. Obviously, it's the same on audio platforms as well. Little comments, little five-star reviews and that. They really mean a lot to us and it helps boost the show and it means that people are enjoying it and it becomes more visible. Obviously, you can do that via social media as well. You can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, however you want to do that or come and join the Discord. The Discord's a great place to hang out. You meet like-minded individuals from the community. You get direct access to myself, producer Steve, RDF Tactics. What more can you say? I mean, that seems totally fair. It costs nothing, and it really helps the show out. So hopefully, that's the sort of thing you might consider. If you do want to give us a little bit of love, come and support us. Come and subscribe to the show, because you know what? We enjoy it, and we like you. So you know what? Back to the episode. Right, so, you, right, so you have to register seven as a minimum. <laughs> <laughs> maximum Not eleven nonsense. Just, just seven lads. Just so sort that out. In the Premier League, you've got a maximum of twenty-five players. I think you can register. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In there, you've got a maximum squad size of fifty-three players. players... <laughs> fifty-three. I get ninety-nine in Greece. Come on, this is half of what I'm dealing with. <laughs> players can be signed on a free transfer and registered at any time. I didn't know that one. That actually. Ooh, any time. Yeah. Anytime can be uh, players signed on the free transfers can be registered at any time. That is a nice touch. He's like, come on, play the last three games, lads. <laughs> hey, are there any of you goalkeepers? Because I've got really important European matches and a cup final. I am. To <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no. I'm. I'm looking for uh, foreign rules. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's fairly restrict. I think it's fairly easy. Isn't it on on the yeah. on the registrations? I think I'm just looking at it. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, there must be a rule here. So I can see with the long rules, there's maximum of seven uh, foreign based players over the age of 22. I mean, you might as well just not had the rule there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm I'm looking at the Casapia squad, and no one's got the foreign sign next to them. So yeah, I don't think it's a thing. Mm, okay, okay. And then in terms of of places where you might want to start looking to bring players Brazil. in, are we? <laughs> I'm going straight about this. At least try and give me Uruguay first. No, the thing is that obviously the language, the language barrier, it's not, it's not difficult, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Brazil, which is an all Brazil squad. Casa oh, Brazil. <gasps> oh, that's oh, Casa okay. Brazil. <laughs> that, oh, that yeah, might be that my challenge. Done. Yeah, that's me. Little. Aaron Sanz, uh, Aaron Sam Samba beats. <laughs> you Brazilian? Yeah, great. Come in. <laughs> so, so does that mean then that you're going to play with a Brazilian box as well? Ooh, ooh. I'm looking at Yuki Soma. I'm thinking he's a winger. So I'm sorry, lad. <laughs> he's gone. He's yeah, he's, like, yeah, sorry. You're going to either have to be an advanced playmaker cash, or nothing. <laughs> cash for those Brazilians. <laughs> Okay, excellent, excellent. Oh, right, well, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how how Casa Casa Brazil develops over the uh, three to five year period. Obviously, as I say, quick recap 
on the rules. It's a three to five year save. We suggest taking Porto, Benfica or Sporting. You can pick whoever you want in Portugal. If you want to go into the second division, you're more than welcome as well. Um, have fun with it. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Let us know how you get on. Don't, like, right, we'll do the do's first, right? Do pick a team. Do manage three seasons. <laughs> Do let us know how you get on. Do it in Discord. The links in the Discord is below. And so is the save file. So take that save file. It's all set up for you. You don't have to do anything. Um, just add your manager to the save. Uh, so that's the leagues and everything's all in the background. So we've, we've suggested some other nations there for players in. So it's all there for you. Do let us know how you get on. Tweet us. Have fun. Remember, there's no prize. At the end, there's no, there's no real winner. Um, you know, um, don't, Aaron. I'm gonna, I've, I've written a list of don'ts here. I've, I've written, don't ask what tactic to download. Yeah. Don't ask what players to sign. Uh, don't boast about how well you've done. Don't complain. Uh, don't ask for more clarification on how you win the challenge because there isn't, we, we don't win. And no, basically, if you're going to download a tactic, do it. You know what I mean? Play the game however you want to do it. Yeah. Use it, look at your sort of, sorts of, uh, of players you've got. With regards to players to sign, yeah, you know, ask, look, take as much as much help as you need. But, yeah, just just have fun with it, Aaron, isn't it? Yeah, he's ready for... Is it Casa Brazil or Casa America where I can buy players just from, like, South America? Oh, look at this. You've got them already. <laughs> no, like, no, no, oh. no, no, no. Because there's a player in the team. He's 20. Uh, where is oh, he? He's from Paraguay. No, he's yeah. from Venezuela. And I'm like, oh, I think I want to build a team around you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe you want a mate. Maybe you want another Venezuelan. Venezuelan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, that's going to be interesting, then, isn't it? Build a Venezuelans. Um, <laughs> Aaron, you you can you can build whatever you want, my friend. Right? You can build whatever you want. Um, basically, the save file is going to be in the Discord. The breakdown of the rules is going to be in the Discord. Um, all your comments, I hope, are going to be in the Discord as well. Any questions, do feel free to ask them. Uh, with regards to comments that we've had on previous videos, Aaron, we have had a video of a comment from Nick Fury, who's, who's gotten touched quite a bit on, on the old mm -hmm. YouTube. Nick Fury uh, says that one thing Aaron didn't notice, now this was in the game management episode, yeah. was one thing you didn't notice was the real reason that Ipswich scored from the corner is that by putting the right back on support, brackets with a yellow card, facing off with their left winger, who was looking like he was on attack duty, as the heat map showed, it put a lot of pressure on the right flank, especially with the Mazala going attacking as well. Ipswich kept getting corners on that flank. Um, so there you go. That's that's the joy in it of being able to sit back and, and take yeah, it yeah, all I was in. Like, say, yeah, we were doing yeah. it in in the moment. And, yeah. And and you're right. Once you can step back and look at it, you're like it opens up everything. That's so the post, great, the post great match spot, analysis. Nick. Yeah, that's post match great analysis. Spot. There. I was just going to say the same thing is that I can imagine that sort of foot manager on the sideline is like, you're not going to spot everything that's going on at the same time. Um, we've also got a manage manager. Wow. We've also got a comment from Simon. We have got a manager. They're all <laughs> managers, Aaron. They deserve the respect that they deserve, right? <laughs> we've got a, a message. Oh, we've done it again. From Simon Hinton, 3856. Been playing champ man since the 90s. I am like Tony. Never touched the player instructions. <laughs> Us 90s lot were a different breed, aren't we? <laughs> but isn't that, how you, isn't that how you built the tactic before, though? Wasn't it more... Because you're like... Every player had like their own thing in it, so you'd move like the, the mentality, the passing... No. Like, you're a little freedom. Was it, a little what bit, was it, no. creative freedom? Was that Because it wasn't like wrong from position. I'm trying to remember what, what it used be, to be. Be disciplined and be expressive, Be wasn't expressive, it? that's all. I'm being expressive, yeah. yeah. I wasn't getting into the individual bits. There was one... There was a couple of matches where I managed to do it in game and say to like to job going oh come on you're you know you're giving the ball away too much right no more <laughs> risks for you um this guy's like you need to stick hold your position um so there's a couple of matches i've done it in game but to set up the tactic with specific instructions beforehand i just tend to go look lads this is the rough shape this is how i want you to play feel out on the pitch if it's going wrong i'll tell you you're doing it wrong and we'll change it as we go along <laughs> we also had a, uh, a comment from Danny Gaming as well. Had me crying, lad. Great pod. I hope that's tears of laughter. 
I presume it's all his tears of laughter. I can't imagine there's anything else. Um, unless unless he's crying because the show was over, uh, Aaron, which um, is possible because we've come to the end of this week's episode as well. Now so we've come to the, to the end, end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Not the podcast, just the episode, because that just sounded real sad. That, that sounds like we've given up. Like just, yeah, We haven't, by the way. <laughs> we haven't. We're still very much here. Um, and if you want to check that we're still here, you can follow us on all the social media, can't you, Aaron? Where can they find us? They can find us at the FM Show Pod all over the social interten. That's, um, that's Twitter. That's Instagram. You can find us on YouTube as well, the FM Show. And make sure you go and check out the Patreon. The FM show pod show pod show thing. <laughs> I got it earlier, so that's all that counts. That's all that counts. Yes, yes. The links in the description. Enjoyed the show. The links in the description. <laughs> <laughs> if you've enjoyed the show please remember to like the video share it leave a comment below <laughs> tag us in all your comments on social media and of course oh, join man. the patreon patreon.com forward slash the fm show pod and if you want to send us an email it's the fm show pod at gmail.com aaron can't wait to see how everybody gets on with the community challenge we're all off to portugal take care of yourselves everyone we will see you all on the next one. Bye for now. Want to learn even more about Football Manager? Subscribe to the Patreon. Just visit patreon.com slash the FM Show Pod. Don't forget to rate and review and follow along on the socials at the FM Show Pod.